What's up guys, Vince the Longineer here. Today is a big day. We actually have a core aerator coming. Uh, myself and a few other neighbors have chipped in and uh, we're gonna try and get some core aeration done today. Uh, there's a lot of rain in the forecast. Um, I'm a little concerned about tearing up the lawn, but we're all on board. We all have the day off. Um, so we're gonna have to do it. Just make the best of it, be careful. Um, but um, in preparation for the machine coming, I'm just going to get one uh, last mow in and I would really like to dethatch if I can do that. I will do that. I'm a little concerned about that too because the ground is wet and um, it's an electric dethatcher. So I'll just read the manual to see what they recommend on that. Um, hopefully there's something written to it, but uh, it just doesn't sound like it would make sense. Uh, if I can get a few more hours without any rain and this can have some time to dry out, that'll be better. But um, I'm really looking forward to today. Lots of exciting action, lots of hard work, so stay tuned. Right, <clears throat> so we got a cut in using the reel. I uh, just want to check the height real quick. The last time I cut it was at three inches, so I took it down a few notches. As you can see, it doesn't even look like it's at two and a half or two and three quarters of an inch. It looks much shorter than that, but it's, it's that tall. Oh, and uh, by the way, I looked at the uh, instructions for the dethatcher and it does say, do not expose to rain or use in damp locations. So I think we're out today for the uh, dethatcher because the ground is soaked and uh, we've only got more rain coming. But that doesn't necessarily mean we can't core aerate today. Actually, although I am worried about tearing up the lawn, I think I can be careful with the machine. Um, the ground is nice and, 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 and saturated, so I'm expecting to pull very good long cores. Um, and when you're core aerating, you want to pull at least like a two and a half to three inch core, or kind of like the rule of thumb where the core is about the length of your thumb. That's a good core. Got my measuring tape here. And it looks like we are at, yeah. I would call that, oh, well, yeah, I guess it's still at about three inches, maybe, maybe two and three quarters. I did lower it a few notches, so, but it doesn't really matter now because we're not dethatching, so, but at least I got a good mowing. And guys, just uh, so you know, the, uh, one of the advantages to using a real mower is that you can mow when it's wet. It cuts like a scissor action and it gets a nice clean cut whether it's dry or wet. It's not too bad. All right guys, so it is here, the core aerator. Let's go over some of its features. To start the machine, this is a standard Honda engine. It has a switch here, you turn that on. And then over here you have your choke. You get your choke and your fuel, and this is already on. So th this would be off, the fuel would be off, the fuel shut off. So turn that on, and then you give this a pull. And 
that's how you start it. Uh, this is actually warmed up. I really didn't need to use the choke. Um, but other features you have on this are uh, weights, transport weights. So you put these in when you're ready to use the machine, but when you're transporting, you can pull these guys out um, and remove them. Uh, each one of these weighs quite a bit. Um, geez, probably weighs about 40 to 50 pounds. Uh, but that makes it a lot easier to transport. But you want to make sure they're in when uh, when using the machine. And every every machine's a little bit different. The design's a little bit different. But they all have these removable weights. Some of them are on the side over here. These ones are in the front. Um, and then we'll go over to the operation handles here. So this right here is how the machine goes. You pull this lever up and the tines engage. And when the tines are down in the ground, that is what propels and moves the machine forward. So um, this bar right here is what engages the tines. Uh, it, takes, it requires some force to push this down. You're actually gonna push this down and the machine will drop down, the tines will go into the ground, and that's how the cores are pulled. Um, the tines rotate, and as it rotates, the tine is going into the ground, pulling the plug, and popping the plug out. Um, so to kind of show you the force required here, I'm putting pretty much all my weight down, and then it drops down like that. And you can see the machine is now engaged, and the tines are in the ground. So let's give this a try. Uh, we're going to do uh, probably a double or a triple pass aeration. I actually have the machine for the entire day. So I'm going to make tons of holes here. The weather's looking okay right now. I'm going to try and get this done before it starts raining. But then my neighbors are going to give it a try as well. And um, I'll take some good footage of that. All right, so I did one pass with the machine, and uh, this is kind of what, what it looks like. Tore up some areas here. That's when I was getting used to how the machine was gonna react. I mean, these machines will pull you along for a good ride, so be prepared to hang on and uh, just keep up with, with the pace of the machine. Um, don't think there's anything you can do to uh, at least for this machine, I do think other machines have some kind of throttle control or um, more touch sensitive handles, but this one, as soon as you pull that lever up, it just goes. So you just got to be prepared for that. Um, and this is what the cores look like over here. Not looking too good. Um, I'd like them to be a little bit longer. So we'll see if I can uh, do something. Now I was actually going this way and there's a there's a slight slope to the ground so the machine wanted to like pull this way sideways a little bit so I think that had a little bit to do with it so what I think I'll do is I'll go kind of up and down in this direction here so I've got the hill um, to work with and the, the machine when I'm going uphill will like just dig down into the back and, and really dig down deep and get some really nice cores um, as we go down here the cores look to get a little bit better. As we go down here, the cores do get a little bit better. Again, thinking if we go uphill here, we'll pour, we will pull better cores. Like here, here's a real good one right here. That's, that's kind of what we're looking for. All right, so we will continue with the core aeration and uh, see how this turns out.
So over here, what I'm going to have to do is move this swing set. And also, I have a drain that runs, basically I have a yard drain that runs from this point here. Here's the yard drain here. And it runs straight down here to one of these pop-out drains or pop-up drains. So I don't want to hit that, so I'm going to mark it and I'm going to try and stay clear of the line. It should be deep enough, but just to be safe, I don't want to poke holes in that pipe. So I'll just be cognizant of that when I'm in this area with the machine, trying not to uh, run over that spot. finished up the core aeration on this yard and as you can see we've uh, done a pretty good job tearing things up here um, these are what the cores look like okay size I mean I would have liked longer cores but actually these these broke apart so I'm sure that they were they were a little bit longer um, when they were pulled right out of the ground um, here's one that seems to be an okay size. So that's pretty good. Um, and as you can see in general, I think we did a pretty good job. And what I did with the machine, um, so here, here's a spot that got ripped up pretty good. Uh, and that happens. I mean, I'm not, I'm not too concerned about that. I mean, we're going to be doing an overseeding. I'm not going to be doing that today. Typically, I would do overseeding the same day that I aerate. But we've got a lot of storms coming in. And, um, and they're going to be starting soon. And I just don't want to get caught in a rainstorm while spreading seed. So I'll probably do that this weekend. Um, this is the area where uh, earlier in the season, it was really starting to pull up. Um, the roots uh, seem to have uh, either been eaten up by bugs or disintegrated due to something like fungus. Uh, it did come back green in some spots, uh, but here you can see this, this spot here completely torn up. A couple other spots torn up. I'm not, you know, again, like I said, I'm not too concerned about this. I'm going to be fixing all this with the, uh, the seeding and I'll put new, uh, new peat moss over everything here. What I'll do now is give the machine to my neighbor and we will go over into his yard and see what they've got going on. of the next steps we need to do here and this was part of my action plan because my soil was actually acidic from uh, the results that I got back in my yard mastery soil test kit I'm gonna be adding calcitic lime this is solucal and I am gonna be adding this entire bag to my 4,000 square foot lawn to try and raise the pH back in that sweet spot of around six and a half to seven or so um, we'll see what we can do. I do plan on uh, retesting this in a few months to see if it actually worked. I do have another bag um, that I will use if I need to, uh, but we'll see how this goes down. So here it is on the bag. We want to raise the pH. So this bag, if you raise it, it's 12.5 pounds per thousand square feet. So the bag will cover 4,000 square feet. That's what we're going to do.
is how you do core aeration. So there you have it. It was a busy day. Got a lot done. Core aerated. Put down some of the solucal, the calcitic lime. Uh, I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and thank you for joining.